In this video, we're going to discuss project three, the determination uh, of an unknown concentration of a protein. Um, and so in this project, you're taking uh, a protein, which is BSA, bovine serum albumin, and reacting it with some dye, which when they make a protein dye complex, it will change color. And then you're going to measure the absorbance of the light at 565 using a spec 20. So just a brief review in absorbance. So in the spec 20, you will have some light source, you will have your sample, and then you will have a detector. And basically the fraction of light that is transmitted through the sample is called the transmittance. And that's basically the power of light that makes it through the sample divided by the power of light um, that came from the initial light source. Um, so that's how we define transmittance. Um, and you'll see that your SPEC 20 can measure either transmittance or absorbance. You probably have um, experienced more absorbance if you've taken the 201 and 202 labs. Um, and so the absorbance is merely just the negative log of this transmittance. And so most of the time, the uh, instrument and the computer readout will just do this um, for you here. And then again, hopefully just a review that the absorbance according to Beer's law um, for dilute solutions is directly proportional to the concentration of the solution. So Beer's law um, is here. And again, this epsilon is just our molar absorptivity. And this is a constant that's spe uh, specific to the sample and also specific to um, the wavelength. L here is our path length. Uh, and C is concentration. Um, and so absorbance is unitless and so um, depending upon your units of concentration, molar absorptivity, and path length, they should all cancel out. Um, and so, and then the path length again is just the path of your sample. So what you'll do in this um, project is you're going to measure the absorbance of known concentrations of protein. So you're going to prepare several standards at known concentrations. And then you're going to measure those absorbances. And so once you get those absorbances, then you will plot them in Excel. And as I mentioned before, Beer's Law holds true for dilute solutions. Um, if we get too concentrated, it's very difficult for obviously light to pass through. And so you can actually saturate, um, not really saturate your detector, but you basically get outside of what we call our linear dynamic range. And so So I want to make sure that I have my linear range. So some of the solutions that you'll measure might be um, higher concentration out and outside of the linear dynamic range. And so you use your R squared values to remove some of those points. Um, and then you hopefully will have at least five points in your linear dynamic range. And again, the linear dynamic range just basically tells us that the absorbance is going to be directly proportional to the concentration of our solution. So once you have your calibration curve, um, Once you 
have your calibration curve uh, constructed, you're then going to get a sample that's prepared at an unknown concentration. So it's going to be the same BSA that you use to construct your calibration curve, but now it'll be at an unknown concentration. And so now you can prepare the solution, measure the absorbance, and then based on its absorbance, you can use the um, line that you have. Where Y is absorbance um, and your X is your concentration. And then here, this term becomes the slope of your line. And so you can use your, um, the absorbance that you measured for your unknown concentration to determine the actual concentration of that. You'll be doing um, this product and calculating some of the error. And so this reaction, the dye with the protein is time sensitive. So you will have to um, plan accordingly. And so make sure that you're preparing your samples, that you're leaving enough time for yourself to actually take the measurement. Um, so give yourself 30 seconds to swap out samples and put them in. Um, and so the different types of error you'll be looking at is if you're testing one sample um, multiple times. So you will prepare one sample and then take three different readings of that same sample and seeing if there is any kind of instrument drift and that would show kind of the instrument error. You'll also be taking measurements of multiple samples. So now you will prepare three different samples and take those measurements. And this will kind of see, um, again, if this is time sensitive, this kind of gets into the uh, user error area here. Um, and then finally, you're going to look at the effect of contaminants. And so this reaction um, and the protein dye complex depends upon a lot of things. So this protein needs to be available to react with the dye. Um, and so if we add certain contaminants, and so you'll be adding some salts, you'll be adding some surfactants, um, you might be changing the pH a little bit. Um, so these things might be changing the interaction that the protein and the dye can be having. And so think about each of the things that you're putting in. Um, does it make the protein side chains more available? Is it reacting with the dye? Um, which could maybe then affect the uh, resultant protein dye complex and then give you maybe an inaccurate concentration. 